yeah, he's back from the dead. You're putting it on the map, yeah, Saskatoon, right next to New York. New York. Yeah, what show, yeah? Your show. What time is it? Your show. Yeah, time to talk some shit, yeah. Your show. Yeah. We have fun, Maggie. Bark, bark, wolf, wolf, who wants a treat, yeah? Keep listening. You will not be disappointed. Let's hear the crowd. What an intro. Not that I'm turbo, everybody. All that was missing was the shadow. You Isn't see the funny? shadow in there. Hey, it's perfect. It's coming, buddy. We got a shoot coming, and it's going to be fantastic. Welcome to your show, the second ever edition if you need to try to box it into something, it's whatever the hell you want to be. And that's why we love it so much. It is your show. My name is Gary. I got Lil B in the booth, the greatest producer slash head, head engineer of all time. Lil B, you talking yet today? Or are you still shy? Lil shy guy? Sure, shy. I'll talk. Hey, there he we is. We can hear him in the comms, wow. too. How you doing today, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, I, I feel like we've learned so much since yesterday as... You know, it, it takes reps. 100%. Everyone knows if you want to get something good, you got to rep it out. So I feel like we had a really good pump yesterday, and now we are going to thrive on the drive that comes from Margaret No Cookies. That was a close call. Nice. They're so good. Maggie. Uh, Maggie so we're, we're kicking the show off with my main man here. You may know him from everything in the world. Come here, uh, he finds... All of the best things for you he creates. He's also a very kind, beautiful gentleman. His name is Clayton Croker. Give it up, everyone, for Mr. Croker. And the crowd goes wild. Woo, as yeah. Everyone's got a hand. Everyone's got something in their hands right now. That's just a couple, awesome. just a couple washed up radio guys here. Hey, this look is at it. us here. I, mean, I, I believe it's called the dream. I, I, I believe it's called washed up, actually. That's what it's called. But you know how hard it is, like, been keeping this a secret? Because I like I have been seeing this garage grow and grow and it's grow crazy. for the past couple of months, right? I, this was empty two months ago, and now you got everything in here, and uh, I know it from, like, day one what you were doing when you Ooh. told me the whole plan of this garage studio and everything, and I was like, man, that's awesome. A week later, it was like, boom, it's being done, and, like, man, the, the vision you have, the drive you have, this is fantastic. It, look, it's, at, look at us. It, it's, look at us. It's wild, right? Like, when we sat here and before on your show, Hey, funny. That's how it works. Okay, yeah. on your show, and we talked about. It, and you're like, do you want to tell anyone anything? I was like, I don't think I can, because I really didn't know what it was. We both. And to your credit, you're the only other human being I think on earth who saw the vision right off the bat when I told you about well, it. Well, because again, we kind of come from the same yeah. past. Right? I was. We were, we're both radio guys. That's and started it. in small towns, worked our way up to Saskatoon, Absolutely. and then you know, still wanted to keep it going after the old <laughs> happened. So. Again, like us, we got to be creative somehow, right? If we're not creative, it's tough. So. It also just so happens that network Ryan looks exactly like Croker. We're exactly. The, uh, we're the Sedines of the, uh, of the Saskatoon internet world. Oh, I, uh, awesome. When I lived in Uncle Rico, glory day story. They yeah, used to throw I, balls back in the day. When I lived in Chilliwack, yeah. uh, I played for the mighty Chilliwack Huskers, their junior football team. This was, right when, uh, this was right when the Vancouver Canucks were um, going to Stanley Cups and rioting downtown, that yeah. kind of thing, right? Choking in the big game as they do. <laughs> um, but in the, like, I had a receiver who looked exactly like Ryan. Like we were network so Ryan like, again. Like I look like Travis Lule, who again, who was also slinging the rock for the BC Lions at the time. Red hot Lule. Lule. A lot of juice. Oh, I get the no. Andy Dalton all the See time. See the Red Rocket. How la I get Matt Bonner. I get um, oh, like Matt Bonner references. He was like good for two years back in the so day, right? Good. But uh, yeah, there was a, they called us the Sedines in the paper. Me and my redhead that. receiver. So they're so like, proudy. hey, we got there's Daniel and Henrik in Vancouver, but then the Chilliwack version. You want to talk mm -hmm. about? Really, Uncle Rico eating it? Oh yeah, I guess you would call it. that was really good. Oh, we can go back. Like I, that's that's not even my best Uncle Rico story. We can go back to the Gordy Howe Bowl days and talk oh. about the old Holy Cross High School football days and stuff. But no one wants to hear that. That's uh, well, a I'm glad you bring that up because the reason I wanted you on today is I'm sitting here and I'm seeing how every single sports team around these parts are thriving and then every time i see that that's happening you are the person telling me so well, i thought what better way to get everyone caught up on where all of our favorite local sports teams are at than by bringing you in my friend and getting you on top of this one what do you got going on tell like, us about everything that's going on in your life like do you remember when it was just the saskatoon hilltops that was the mm. good sports team in town and that was it right it was like oh the hilltops are good the the blades are trash 
whatever semi-pro basketball team is in town is in trash, Man, right? You know, the Huskies. A, a quick one about the yeah. Hawks. Remember the Hawks? Just got to oh, the Hawks. Yeah. Man, the slam, the slam used to sell out games at Sastel Center, slam but then it awesome. just kind of went yeah. away, Every time right? come but, in. The, okay. be- the beauty of the Hawks, real quick, we were the boys in Section Q. Mm-hmm. We literally got guys missing free throws. One guy tried to jump yeah. into the crowd to fight the boys okay. in Section Q. The, the guys at halftime would give us yeah. all of the stats from the first half, and we call out to every guy, hey, nice brick, you're 0 for 7 now, bud. Okay, who, awesome. who was better, the Hawks or the Slam slash Storm? Because they were kind of the same. No, Do you remember because both? of the Storm warning. Of course I remember. Dude, the Storm was there. like, the, the Storm was first, right? When then I when say Hawks. Storm warning, every, I guarantee you, the seven people watching right now, yeah. we're doing this Storm oh, yeah. warning. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you win. It's a storm warning. My Again, God. brought to you by Penguin Village. I miss Penguin. We did the uh, the draft of things that aren't around anymore. And yeah, yes. Penguin Village went in like the second round. I think Paul Verino's went in the third round. We got to do another one of those drafts. I was going to ask you, how did my uh, how did my number one overall Pelican market so, go? So yeah, so we did um, yeah we did a Saskatoon restaurant draft, and Gary drafted the Pelican market with the first overall pick. That's not even a restaurant. So like, like, so again, with all the good restaurants in town, not even a good like. Like, divey kind of bar, like Granada House or Zervos, like kind of a Gary kind of place. Also, Amigos, right? He takes Pelican Market. And you were a rookie drafter, though. Like, you're not good at... I had three years of drafting on the radio. You're kind of a... I've lost a lot of drafts. <laughs> that was bad. It was not a good... And Did th- I go there and purchase food? Sure. Did I eat the purchased food? Yeah, but it's not have a restaurant. A Are experience? there any tables or booths in that place? Yeah, in the back. No, in there's the, in the not. Basement, in no, the there's basement. not. You've been Matt, down there. You know, okay, that was my first job ever, and you know that. I Shout worked at the, the Pelican Trump Market there when I was 13 years old stocking shelves. Yeah. That's an apartment down there. That's not an actual restaurant. It's someone's house down there. It's yeah. not an actual... It's a table for a family, and that's not a restaurant. So, yeah, you. so basically you're breaking and entering into a place and eating. That's basically what you're saying. Well, no. Does well, that make any lawyer be. lingo sense? No, not really, but... Okay. Um, well, now... <laughs> The biggest challenge so far is getting back on track. Yeah, so back, I was literally about to be. So back to sports. I don't know how. Why do we always bring up the Pelican market when we're Because the Trumpies own it. We're a Um, Trumpy-endorsed show. Exactly. The whole family. Um, But right now, the Saskatoon Blades, yeah, killing it. Um, So Round one, even though game one was a little bit of an S-word show. Everyone was so worried. Well, it's because here's the thing. Here we go Here's here's the thing about the Blades. Exactly that. Here we go again. The Saskatoon Blades, even when they were a wagon in the 90s with Frank Bannum and Wade Belak and Wilm and all those guys, right? Even when they had Hopi and Nett and Braden Shan, the Memorial Cup year, right? Even a couple years ago with Kirby Doc and Tristan Robbins, there's always been that what if. There's always been that, well, we're just, we're not that team. We're not that championship team. We don't have that history. We just don't have that DNA. This team has it. So like the Blades have been around for 60 years, something like that, 65 years. I don't know. This is, they've never had like an, other than maybe that 94 team that lost to Kamloops, like with the Darcy like Tucker and Aginla yeah. and all those guys. But They've never had like a team like this. This is what we've been waiting for, right? You know what I think we need for these boys is some sort of new tradition, something to buck that trend to say, everyone, we hear you. We know you feel insecure. Something like bringing back the yellow crease so, oh, or something cool like that. We're not that. Delisle over out. here. Well, Delisle, should, Delisle had yellow creases back in the day. And as a former goalie, I love Delisle. Shout out to you, your rink. It still has the Prism and Trooper and Honeymoon so Suite sweet. signs Canada's up there when they played the rink back bands. in the 90s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but this man, that food there too. They forced rink burgers. I did a best Zamboni video there. I'm trying to find the best. I'm trying to find the best. I'm trying to find the best Zamboni driver in Saskatchewan. So I got like I'm going to North Battleford after this for Game Four of Flin Flon versus the Battleford Stars. I just sit there and film the Zamboni for ten minutes. Time and I do like play by play, and kids are betting over under. I'm telling like eleven year old kids like yeah, ten bucks on the over. I'm like this isn't good. We're not a network, so are we? Are we supposed to be talking about all the gambling? Well, no, it's not even. It's illegal underage gambling, okay, but that's whatever. That's the problem. Um, okay, it's too but young uh, it actually kind of took off. Like I don't know, it's kind of taken off. People kind like of? watching it and stuff. You got people on national broadcast. I did a I did a profile on CBC today. It's going to be on tomorrow about we'll the Zamboni deal. thing, which is kind of weird. Shameless plug. I feel like a real feel Dude, like a real Uncle Rico douchebag right now. Before you go any further, the entire reason we built this is for you to plug and promote. Oh, this is just this for me. This is hey? for you. Oh. this is for him. This is for him. This is for you. This is what this is all about. It's your show. Uh, I get it now. I go. So and the last away. horse crosses Whoa. the finish line, right? But no, I'm doing a bunch of stuff like that on social media, finding. Sus- but another thing I'm doing is uh, my own little podcast, Sass yes. Sports and Food. So you were my second guest. Share, man, people come up to me uh, even a couple days ago saying, We missed you on the radio. 
and Gary was our other guy, and you guys sharing those stories about the behind-the-scenes stuff. It was awesome. Again, if you miss Gary on the radio, go listen to that episode because, man, my guy Gary, like, I was always so jealous of him on the radio. I always felt like your second fiddle. I always wanted to be the cool guy on the air, but that was impossible because you were, like, the dude from Big Lebowski on the radio, and it was, impo- it was impossible to beat you, man. It was absolutely impossible to beat you. So, um, that's very nice. But that's the thing. So now I'm doing my own podcast as well, just like you are with the YouTube thing. And uh, it's sponsored by the, uh, the Blade Store. So I get to cover the Blades. I'm interviewing Brendan Lazowski tomorrow on the podcast for the play- playoff mm-hmm. stuff. So uh, it's, it's been awesome being a part of the Blades because I, I got to do the in-stand stuff for like yeah, eight years. Chucking, chucking beef jerky into the crowd and T-shirts and doing like the, the one thing we're talking about bringing back at Blades games, the puck the little puck go-kart that would go around the yes. ice with the slingshot that would fling pucks and into the crowd. And, and at the same time, that. that blimp was going around, yes. dropping like two-for-one blizzards, yes. right? It was just yes. like, that's what we wanted. But um, yeah, so the Blades, they're back in kind of that heyday era where, man, there was like 10,000 people. Yeah. There was 10,000 people at the game. So uh, it's been nice just kind of being back with them because I didn't do a lot of stuff with the team this year after the whole... That's another thing. This is my turn to promote you. Uh, as much garbage and bull baloney that I went through and again mostly self like I deserve to be fired everyone knows I I say that out loud I Mm -hmm. did everything that they told me not to do so that was my fault and I'm sorry and I you know we move on we grow but what's your Uh, but yours but you went through so much more stuff personally to see you here is what I'm saying hey back on track we got through some shit bro that's what I'm saying back on track with the sports though so the best part about the blades is like they got a lot of like just those gritty third, fourth line guys, but they also have the stars. So what's your NHL team again? My NHL team? Yeah. Oh, we don't get in this. I'm a, so my whole family are Bruins fans. So I'm a Bruins fan, but my brother was a Oilers fan, a yeah. Jetski fan. So I'm mixed in between. So whichever one's doing better, I just ride them until I was told by a Trumpy that I have to pick one team playing to go down. Which one is going down? Which one do you save? Why did I think you were a Leafs fan? I don't know why I thought you were a Leafs fan. Do That's I carry probably really myself offensive. like a Leafs fan? My Maybe. mom and my Uncle Kev. Shout out to Uncle Kev. Do you, I know some, he's you do have some Leafs, Leafs fan vibes. I don't know why. It's the beard. Maybe it's the beard. I love Felix Potvin. Oh, who doesn't? The cat? The cat was my Remember dude, getting man. his posters oh, back him. at like the, um, what was it called? The, the Scholastic Book Fair days? Yes. They'd have like Felix Potvin posters and Patrick Wall posters. Yeah. I love those days. But um, the Blades, they got two Leaf prospects with uh, Fraser Mitten. Yeah. He actually started the season with the Leafs this year. He was uh, he played four games for them. He was captain Canada for the World Junior I team. That. So they got that they got this star power on their team. Tanner Molendyke was another yeah, first Mol- round pick. He went to Nashville in the draft. Uh, that Alexander Suzdalev, while kind of useless in the defensive zone. He's not great. He's not. Careful. He's that not, sounded like you're starting to hey, hop over the fair. fence. A I got to be bit. fair, yeah, but he's okay. got to pick. Hey, he's not. He's got to pick it up in the yeah. defensive zone. But that's not why we got him. Kid can score. He was Connor Bedard's left winger last year for the Regina Pats. That's a good so place we got to be. him on there. We've got uh, Brandon Lazowski, who had. Uh, t- he's had three thirty goal seasons in the WHL. Seventh round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we got all these kind of Toronto Maple Leafs. Exactly right. So like. Trevor Wong, 100 point yeah. season. Wong, man, it's, er, is he not the fan favorite? I feel like like Trevor Wong is yeah. like the guy. He was on my podcast. Yeah, he was yeah. on my podcast as well. And he oh, gets really? the thing. You, you got all these. You got all these fan favorites, and like Charlie Wright, who's been there for all five seasons of his Saskatoon Blades career. Uh, ben Saunderson, who was not great last season. He was kind of like the sixth or seventh D man, and now he's playing top four minutes. And like he had this sick goal in Game Five. Coming down the coming down the wing there, pinching, gets the perfect pass, goes top shelf. It was awesome. Just seeing the way that this team is gelling right now at the perfect moment. So Moose Jaw is the other team that they're going after, right? So Moose Jaw, they've got Jaeger Furcus, they've got Matthew Savoy, that's the they've got, they got the Denton Matejuk. So they've There's got no Moose Jaw has no depth, but that's they've got heard. a scary big a three. Good but three. they peaked at the wrong time. So they won like sixteen games in a row. Okay. And now they're starting to kind of go a little downhill, but the Blades are just starting to figure it out. Because, again, they kind of lost their mojo game one there, but now, okay, we figured it out. We're back. We've always had Red Deer's number. That's who we have in the second yeah. round. We have Red Deer. Starts on Friday? Starts on Friday, 7 o'clock, Sastal Center. Be there, be square. He's going to be here um, for the pregame show Oh, yeah, I'll well. be there. I'll be here Kicking before on Friday. We'll I like coming here. Oh, blades. yeah, this yeah. gets me amped up. Yeah, Good to go yeah. talking Blades hockey. <laughs> um, the one thing, though, about the Blades, uh, Easton Armstrong, uh, who's been arguably the best player in the playoffs for us so far, he got hurt in Game 5, as did goalie Evan Gardner. Now, Gardner is the one everyone's worried about. He's been a pretty good goalie, but our backup, Austin Elliott, last year's Rookie of the Year in the Very Eastern good. Division. He's really good. Very He's good. got a little bit of confidence issues right now. He's fighting the puck, but what goalie hasn't fought the puck at one point? Oh, right? Many. Yeah. My whole career was fighting the puck. I had like four good games. Um, yeah. But 
Like, the the Blades are, are fine. The thing is, if, they, if that happens to Moose Jaw, if their goalie goes down, they're screwed. Like, if their starter goes down, yeah, they're back up. He had one good game, I think, against Swift Current or something like that. But other than that, like, they're, they're super, they're not deep. The Blades are deep. They got the two goaltenders. If one of those goes down, worst case scenario. Um, it's just exciting times being a Blades fan. Like, it's really, really exciting being a Blades fan because there's not that what-if feeling. There's not that we're going to blow it feeling. There's that feeling every day when we go to the rink where it's like, we're going to win. And this is the year. And we've been waiting so long. And there's been people who have been going there for 25, 30 years. Like, they have, I think, like 200 season ticket holders who have been going there consistently 25, 30 years. That's and nice. for them, I can't, like, I've interacted with them a bunch in the crowd when I worked for the Blades and everything. And just when you get to know them and you just, like, they that, deserve it, man. And, like, people connection. like Les Lazaruk and yeah. people like Hilti and, like, all, they deserve a championship because that, yeah. like it's been that, a cornerstone franchise forever. And nothing, no banners to show for it. That season ticket holder effect, though, like, when you were actually, like, for us, like, the Nickel mm-hmm. family, we bought our first season tickets to the Blades when Ryan Gauthier, good, good friend of ours, yeah. the whole Gauthier fam, uh, he was playing for the Blades. And he was the superstar, and he was scoring goals, and he was making it all happen. So we went in support of him. So lots of those connections are made like that, where it's a guy that you've known your whole life growing mm-hmm. up, and all of a sudden he's on the Blades, or like Mike yeah. Garnett. Like all these guys that we know already. It's like, yeah, so then that gets you in as a season ticket holder. And then... You get in and you get in exactly. and it goes down and you're like, oh, and then it becomes a thing again. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. And again, shout out to all those other, you know, smaller D-men who didn't get a true shot. That's some baloney yeah. for another show. But the tough thing is, is that while the Blades do have a lot of good prospects in, the, in their prospect pool right now, yeah. they have like 11, 19-year-olds. So next season, right, you can only have three 20-year-olds. Yes, they got to get rid of a lot of these guys. A lot of room. So they're obviously going for it this year. Like this is the year that they're going for it. And next season's a lot of question marks, yeah. but we can't think about that. You got to think in the now when it comes to junior hockey, especially when you finish where you did. Exactly right. We were the best team in the league, the most points. We got the Scotty Monroe Trophy. So it's it, you always got to think about the future in yeah. junior hockey. That's the thing because it's always you're always going to have a different team the next season. But I, I'm just worried that Blades fans are all of a sudden, oh, they're not good anymore. See ya. Because I call it the hilltop effect. The hilltops are always good. Mm-hmm. They're never bad. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you the last time the Hilltops had like an under 500 season. Yeah, and they have been the team that's been here forever, right? Yeah. Like them and the Huskies. So everyone expects that Hilltop level of greatness from all the teams. And when it's not there, meh, yeah. right? Like the Rush move here their first season. Mm-hmm. And Great right, they go to three straight championships. Oh, yeah, we expect that because our Hilltops do it. The f- they went to the second round of the playoffs and lost. And Rush fans were like, this is crap. <laughs> Hold what on. are you talking about? Are you like, saying fans can be a little rough? Well, on that's, that's the thing. Like, if you don't have these championship teams, it seems like in Saskatoon, like you're not going to get the support. That's why I'm always trying to say, like, always support the local, local team. team. And that's my like trying yeah. to get that going on Twitter and Facebook. No matter what, like, it's 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 about winning and it's about getting trophies, right? But it's also about going to games with your friends and Experience. having something to do with your family and you know having like a thing like wind up parties or get togethers, something Birthdays. like that, right? That's what it's about: supporting yeah. the local team. Because so many people work for the Blades for the rush yeah. and I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little small business here in town I right so still remember and the huskies day. yeah and, they, and that's the thing we got the huskies as well and the husky football team they're kind of like the hilltops they had a couple rough years in between there but uh and again husky hockey with their new building i do miss rutherford i will say that everyone does i did a zamboni watch uh, episode at merlis belcher yeah. again great guys there i love everything involved Absolutely. and everything to do with merlis belcher unless you but something took, about unless Ru- you took power skating there but Growing up, and you got bag skating yeah. and puked all over the middle of just, Rutherford and had that memory forever. Yeah. There's just something about Sweet. that rink. There was just something the about s- that rink, Rutherford rink. Just You can just feel That's the memories f- in the wall, right? That's and, for another show, yeah. for sure, because I got a bunch of stories. The rust that delays rink. and everything uh, like I, that. I see we have a great shot, which means it's a great time to cut to the Maggie Cam. Oh, Get up Maggie. for the Maggie Cam. Oh, Powered Maggie. by our good friends over at Bet Planet on 8th Street. Your pet's natural. Grows her shout out too. Oh, here comes a quick getaway. She's going to have a little hairball. Oh, no, she's okay. You Your do dog's it? so cute, man. We still need we need to do our um, our handy dog uh, podcast. So your dog has three legs. My dog's blind. My dog doesn't have any eyes. She lost her eyes when she was a puppy. Oh, so I God. always picture, like, imagine, like, Maggie, like, we, like, put a treat there or something, and we make them stay here. And then it's just our voices somehow, but it's just, like, the dogs on the video. She's I don't looking know. like she doesn't That was, like, a 2 a.m. idea with me and Gary that we had, the Handy Dog podcast. But I don't What about the Handy Cat? The Handy Find cat. some handicapped cats in the Handy Cat. But we cat. don't have cats, though, man. Like, well, well why yeah, would that but, work? That's why I said you find them. 
<laughs> no, well, we already got two dogs. Well, let's go rescue everyone and bring <laughs> yeah. them in here, and let's be the everyone camp. I don't think my blind dog would do too well with all the That's equipment true. in here and stuff mayhem. like that. Yeah, it would and be complete. She'd get excited and she'd be falling okay, yeah. but it's not the best. Yeah, thing. probably. Okay, so handy. Yeah. Okay, so That's rest right. in peace, Handy Dog Podcast. Again, it was a good run. Pro- hey, it was a really, really good run. It is a great time, again, to promote the fact that this is a fully accessible studio, as mm-hmm. I was talking with my man Kenny over at Cosmo today, and uh, we're getting some tours lined up. We're done to do shows, so... Between Cosmo, Politan Industries, and Elmwood, mm-hmm. we're going to have a literal like a once a week show with all the participants and the people working with them. And they're all going to be rolled up right here. It's going to be amazing. So this is accessible for everyone, no matter what is what I'm saying. So don't ever say the dream is dead. Mm-hmm. Another sports thing, uh, Saskatoon Berry season right around the corner. I wasn't going to go there yet, but so that let's goes, do it. That goes, that goes in May. Are you a fan of the berries? Like See, the, the logo and the, the way they're love, going with that creative, like it. that Savannah Bananas direction. Do you like Dude, that? When it got promoted, I, I saw Healthy. I was like, Healthy, hey, just so you know, man, you got a good announcer right here. I'm ready to go for baseball. And then I got to let go. So <laughs> I'm a huge fan. And again, rightfully so, it was not a job for me. I love Tyler and everyone with the rush. You guys are amazing and beautiful people. All the love to you. That'd you got be, the right guy there now. Shout out to Gregor. I got like a Weird Al idea. Prove like, it. Instead of Afro Man, and then I got high, and then I got let go. I was going to go far in my career, and then I got let go. It doesn't work for the width. It doesn't work for I was going to post on social media, but, but I, I got, got let, let go. go. Oh, you can go. Ah, got one more? I can't think of one uh, more. I got one more. I was going to bring a topic, but I don't know. I don't have to because I got let go. Again, it doesn't work. There's too many. No, th- again. What did we do in the music biz? Just, just put working title yeah. on top of it? Just like working Handy title. Dogs, rest in peace to that uh, song. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I love the Berries. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, a, as a member of the Rhinos for a very long time, you know, mm-hmm. with the SMBL and the thriving baseball community we have here, that right there is going to get a lot of support from us boys. That's all I'm saying. What do you think of the negative attention, though? Because, again, there are some old, crusty fans who will be like, nope, and they'll kind of dominate that fact where they're like, oh, man, no, what is this, a, what is this an under-nine peewee kind of thing, right? Are like, you telling me that people are complaining about somebody going out of their way to bring us an amazing product for you to take your family and friends to and enjoy? I know. I think people get caught up in the sports aspect of it where it has to be like a big, scary name. Why? I don't know, especially with baseball. You don't need a big, scary, intimidating thing in baseball. Like it's a, football. If you're called the Berries, sure. And like then, like a football team called the Berries. I got one. K. I got one. Yeah. <clears throat> in uh, the form of cherry pie. He's my berry guy. Right, there you go. And the the mascot's name is Barry, and he's a big bear. I thought like I thought they were just going to go with the big purple like Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka I and just have grimace. that. I think they're still going to do that though. Grimace? So yeah, or yeah. Willy Wonka. Okay. Or, or, uh, they could just do Grimace too. There's a great promotional idea there. I just would love to Grimace win a catch there. with Grimace. But, if you could set up a catch with Grimace, I'm in. But they got a lot of fun stuff planned. Like they're going to have like pie eating competitions in like the fourth inning and stuff like that. And there's going to be a bunch of local like stuff at the ballpark. Have they found and... someone to uh, do the instant stuff? I do don't know. I don't know. Right, so if hopefully. If there was somebody who was so passionate about this sort of thing that could just get in there and do it. I'm not talking about mm. me because I am not a worker anymore. I, I worked for know. a month and I'm done. I don't know, buddy. I don't know. We'll see. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather take my kid to the game. I, after, oh, after okay, not, never mind. Don't get him. After not yeah, being, after I thought not, you wanted it. No, after not doing the instant stuff for the blades, it's I like tough, just, right? I like hanging out with my kid at the see, games and making memories that way. Yeah, that's fair. Well, stop being a good dad. Yeah, Jeez. I know, right? The the audacity. How okay? dare you? But look, that's it's exhausting though. When you it did is. the rush, it when is. you did the rush oh. that one season, that's how it, long I, oh. are game days? Like you were just dreading game days by the end. I was like, I was horrified from them because, like. In my head, I'm working over here at the other place and I'm grinding and I'm trying to figure my life out. And I know I need another income. I need this. I need something to, you know, add to what I'm doing. Yeah. And then the opportunity comes along as a favor to, again, to Brooksy, our good buddy, Wendy Brooks from uh, Wendy Brooks Social Media. Beauty, by the way. By the way, best human ever. So she's like, hey, yeah, we got this thing if you want to try. I was like, well, I have no experience. I don't know how to do it, but I'll give it a go. And then, so I got on, and you're there like four hours before the ball drops, oh, and man. then you're there like an hour after, and then I was driving back out to Shields, I was like all over the place, what's going on here? So it was a full thing that kept me up at night. Not so to when, mention just doing the game itself, it's just you got to be on. you're screaming, and you're on, and, you're on on. and I, have, I have someone in this year, I have yeah. someone in this year, I got someone over here, I'm pushing a button, and you're going, and you're going, right? And this is when I knew I was in trouble, was because... When, when we were getting set up and it was game one and we're about to go. And then the producer says, all right, let's uh, do a camera on Gary. Let's get camera on Gary. Gary, you tell everyone how uh, awesome you are and how good you're doing and how much you love this. I was like, no, I'm good, guys. 
the whole production just thought, like, what? Yeah. It's like, no, I'm good. Like, no camera on me, please. I'm good. That's and they're like, I think Ugh. you should leave, right? With the, uh, I should have He can't drive, right? I I'm left. good. Yeah. I'm yeah. good. No, thank you. Go You're just going to yell line. at me. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Oh, man. That, oh, what a show. I, but you were good at it. That's the thing. Like, it, it, as good as a guy could be without you know, wanting to be in that position. Mm. It's like Larry David. I feel like I did as good as I could in the position I was in for mm. someone who doesn't like what he's doing. So here's a would you rather for you that has to do with the berries. Would you rather have a Saturday up at the lake? Ooh, which not, lake? It's not, uh, which let's lake? say, let's say I like Shields or a close one, something okay. like that, Diefenbaker gotcha. or Jackfish. I don't know. Just a day at the lake with some good friends, but it's not like an epic lake day. It's a normal lake day, right? So we're talking or, half, half a cooler or yeah, a full cooler? half a cooler, but you got to drive up, right? Drive back, oh. you know, you're a little hot, tired, whatever. It's, just, it's a big day. Or would you rather, you know, stay in the city and go to a Berries game? What kind of guy are you? Well, I'd stay in the city and go to a Berries game. Yeah? For sure. But I'm like, see, if I'm going to a golf course, mm-hmm. like I always said, I lived on the golf course. I yeah. didn't live at the lake. So you know let's I mean? okay. Let's say golfing is incorporated with the lake. Then. Well, now we're talking. Yeah. Am I going with the boys or am yeah. I going like just like with some dude? You're the worst. Would you rather player ever? I You're always have... adding stuff in there. This is yeah. You know, quick questions. answers. Thunder round. Let's okay. go. Barry. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. It's actually really, really fun to keep adding scenarios. Like, on, good old right? day. We would sit there like in high school, just throw in dips in my in my Dodge Shadow. Oh. That's why I love your Dodge Shadow. I had one dips. too. Oh, uh, we would just throw in shoes and sit there and play Would You Rather and just add things on. The most weird, obscure, random thing, right? This is the best yeah. part about being young, just having this limitless creativity. And then... And then you start drinking rye and stuff, and all your creativity goes out the window. Brown right liquor? <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, I tell you, I, I love the lake. I love going to Shields. I yeah. love that nine-hole golf course. Like We've golfed it a couple, couple times. times yeah. It's the best. And I love just hanging out on the deck, listening to the, to the riders on the radio, or listening to whatever tunes, podcasts, just hanging out by the fire. It's a great night. Yeah. But it would be awesome having a night at the ballpark, too. I, I would say I, 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 I still love the lake. I still might say the lake. If we had a better ballpark, hmm. like if we had a cool ballpark by the river, I, I think the berries would have like, they'd sell out games. No well, problem easy, with like a easy. cool, like not a huge ballpark, like a small minor league ballpark right by the river. Nice and awesome place where like, you know, like food carts and local beer places could be All those things set up. I think that would be, I think that would be the, the, the thing to do for the berries. I can tell you as a guy who plays for the Rhinos, shout out to the Rhinos, the Second greatest one today. SMBL. When we, it was a couple years ago, because we play at uh, Cairns, mm-hmm. like in that, they have the two, you have the big yeah. one. That, and then Lycos, yeah. Then Lycos, yeah. So we'd be at Lycos, and each team would get one game at Cairns a year, and nobody could Cairns like the Rhinos. Like, we get in there like an hour early, we got all of our gear up yeah. in the showers, or taking pregame showers, then post-warm-up showers, changing shoes. You feel... In that stadium that you just said that yeah. they might need to replace, we feel like we're superstars oh, in there. Well, we're bums, though. That's why. Like, anything feels great. Yeah, we're a to bunch give us of some bums. Credit. Like, like, it's so cool. Any kind there. of clubhouse when you're playing senior men's baseball well, Any is place there's cool. a shower when a you're sh- playing rec sports. A shed with one of those outdoor showers from Canadian Tire would be cool, right? Yeah. Like Mun- what Munster has, that's cool. There they have go. like an awesome little like locker when room you, and canteen When are you going to do best uh, small town baseball diamond? It's already Munster, so there's no point of going. That so. Quick one. Uh, well, Marysburg has that again, like Marysburg and Munster are right there. Those two the baseball towns, but Munster has the cool ball field. Yeah. Then again, Moose Jaw's is sweet. Moose Jaw has a cool, like the Miller Miller so Park. To Ryan Usher, yeah. the heart and soul Miller Moose Park Jaw. is awesome. So many dingers out there. Dent Park in PA. I don't know Early. if it's around anymore because it was in a bad part of PA, and it was like a it was like a like a um, little league baseball park, okay. but it felt like it was like a like you know where they play the little league World Series. Yeah. That's where it felt. It had like the big like hill in there. It, it was like a cool park. Like the little league. Yeah, World it was called. Dent Park in PA. I don't know if it's around cool. anymore. If they do anything, I remember playing there as a kid, but I I don't I Dent think so. It was in like a neighborhood. It was it, it kind of reminded me of Taylor Field, but for like Pee Wee baseball because it was right in the middle of this kind of like eh, cool. kind of neighborhood, right? Yeah. Which was kind of the fun part about going to Taylor Field was parking on someone's front lawn and then being trying like, to, "Are we gonna make it?" Trying to, to sneak game? A, trying to sneak a keg in through security. We never yeah, get kids, that. The people watching on the roof uh, on the roof trying to like sneak in so and stuff like that. Oh. I I I miss had, old Taylor Field. Okay, here's another. Would you rather? Would you rather have like a big fancy stadium with all the amenities? It's like two years old. You know, huge bathrooms, huge concessions, not a lot of waiting in line. It's just it's beautiful. Or would you rather have that like super old building, but it has history and character and oh, watching the game? It has tradition. it has a smell. Oh, the other place doesn't have the smell. You know, no connection. Smell. So you're talking? Do you like modern and fancy or yeah. 
Do you want to be connected? So to like, what yeah. You're would you rather? Yeah. Experiencing. Mm-hmm. I I'm not be talking connected. old like Sastel nope. Center old. I'm talking like it has like a, like a Fenway As you old. can tell from my house, I like to keep little mementos mm-hmm. that are basically representing special moments throughout my life. And I look at the perfect arena for me would be something like that, where I could look back at the history of my team and look up and see the numbers and the names and admire that I'm in it. Mm-hmm. You know. Instead of walking into the new Oilers space, be like, well, there's a casino over there. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That's the thing. Like, but the thing is, Rexall was a dump. So yeah. That, yeah, there's, that fi- yeah, there's, that fine, no, no. there's that fine line yep. between history and tradition and, oh, this and is classy Rexall, and yeah. dump. Like, Sastel Center is kind of flirting with that right now. Like, I've worked in the, in the far crevices of that building. And it's, yeah, me too. It's, it's wild. Hey? It's, it's getting to the... Uh, you know what pisses me off the most is all the cool hiding spots we used to have as a rec hockey team that plays at Sastel Center. Shout yeah. Out to the Flamingos. They all just got taken over by all the actual employees in there. Oh, man, because tons of people work there now because yeah, it's a huge I mean. operation. So man. all this cool, like I, we had this own special bathroom that yeah. we would all go use to do our pregame duties and yeah. stuff like that. And it's like, we can't do that anymore because everyone's <laughs> working all the time. You want to keep it going with the Would You Rathers? That's, I don't know if anyone wants Kay. to. <laughs> Wow, thanks. I thought I had some, <laughs> thought I had something going there, and then no, wow, just shut me down. Hold on, hold on. Would I rather continue? Would you rather have a downtown arena that's heavily taxpayer funded, or would you rather just keep Sastel Center and keep kind of slapping paint on it? Wow, this one's easy because again, no politics, no religion. That sounds a little politicky. So I oh, will so the fifth. It's not politicky. Do you want a new stadium or not? Lightning round, go. No. Okay, there we go. Unless it's done right, and I've so many. No, I got I. See what you did? You wouldn't be you nice. stand now. You know, you know how they? Uh, you know how they can just move buildings down the highway? They just do that with Sastel Center. Just Pop move it. it. It's fine. Send It'll be. What's the line? Remember the guy on the screw? We're still gonna send yeah, it. Yeah, we'll still, still send, send it, bro. It. It's fine. Ooh. It's fourth. What's how the, have the we been Eddie talking sled, for half an hour? Hey, how much time have you got left? Because no. we got one more guy. We're gonna bring up here. Yeah, right but away. no, he's been sitting here the whole time. Bring oh, yeah. him on. Well, are you sure? Enough getting <laughs> sidetracked over here with me. Like that was just that. All right. Hey, come on. Stand right. up. Hey, Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Clayton Croker. You guys see him all over the internet. He's was, our guy. I thought we were like, oh, it's 10 minutes. we got to figure something out. I was it's like, no way, man. With us, I know. Here, you can come through here if you want. Brian, you need so me. We're working you, on need, a, you need the clock here. We're working on a transition for this. Like, play a little video here or something as we bring on the next guest. That so that's just something uh, to think of, Adam, as we move forward. Remember when Kramer gets his own talk show? Yes. Matt Cuthbertson! So on the promo, I Hello. found him as, uh, you know him from all the bands because you are in so many and you also are in so many hearts in this beautiful community of ours, this music world, this friendship world that we have. And shout out, first and foremost, to your brother, Merbs, who is a birthday boy is that, today. Is this the first uh, birthday shout out on the this show? This is the first ever oh. birthday. Merbs! Oh, Merbs. happy birthday, Merbs. big guy. That's my guy. You took him out. You went for a nice little uh, supper before no, lunch. Uh, we're going to be hitting up some Fud Ruckers oh, after this. You know, we start. We did I the pre gamed with mm-hmm. the booster ju- or uh, the uh, this, Orange Julius. There it is. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to finish up with the Fud Ruckers. I love that. So Maybe again, a, mon- a monster cookie. I don't know. Oh, let's see if you have enough time. Hey, that's the way to do it. So basically, why you are here is again, and I haven't even got to see you yet since you sent the latest intro that you dropped. Oh, well, yeah, I'm basically, I've started to just, just, just do them You're and I'll send, I'll send them to you. Oh. And if you don't want them, that's fine. You know, I want all, that's what I but, told you. I said, I want every single one and that is what we're going to do. So that latest one got approved by everyone instantly when I played it right here. Oh, sweet. That's so you're going to hear a new intro here at probably the end of the week. And they also heard you shredding on the intro for the launch on Friday night oh. with the uh, Dufferin Avenue media network. That was him. Yeah. That old chest. Yeah. This is the face behind the shreds. Yeah, it's funny because you're like, oh yeah, can, can I get it for tomorrow? And like, I work. I you know, scrambled I, you so. Much. I, I work at the city landfill, so you know, I got a, off my shift or whatever, yeah. uh, and then I was like, I got an hour to put yeah. together this thing. I'm like, it'll be fine. I'll that's, just do it, and, and I just send it to you, and you know, I just want to hug you all the time because that's how this whole thing happens. Like our our head of creative design, Andy, like everyone has real jobs. Like I again, we all came together to build this, so everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you sort of do. Come on now. So mostly everyone has real jobs. So when, you know, they're contributing, like they do, I never want to be pushing and say, hey, is there any way you can do this now? So all I do is say, hey, if you have enough time, you know, I'd love for this. And if but, not, because I never want to yeah. pressure. But at the same time, you yeah. want to get out there and show it well, off too, right? Because this is, is all about yeah. you. That's as soon as you told me about this whole thing, and yeah. I, I'm old, so I'm, I'm like, I don't quite understand what it is, but it's some internet Sound like thing. my dad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's as it. soon as I knew you needed you know, some help, 
I'm like, I'm down. And I then you're that. saying that's I'm what so everyone said. It's and so, it's that's such, how something it's like such this a happens. testament to who you no, are because yeah. like oh, you attract the energy, you know, that you give out and everyone that has been there to help you is just so positive and supportive. It's a beautiful thing. Well, see now again, as you'll notice from the, from the launch, I did this a lot. That's so I stopped crying. So if I am about to cry, I grab this, I breathe, well, I reset. Yeah. And I don't cry. So and good. I'm a crier too, so we'll see who who cry. goes first. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Here's the yeah. Feel it. Love crying. All right. Enough of the bull. All right. I just want to yell the S words. How are we on S words network, Ryan? S words. Is that okay? So I could say bullshit and I won't get in trouble. Okay. This band right here, I have, I think, eight Untimely Demise shirts. I got three Raven Witch shirts. I don't have an Into. You shirt know what? Yet. Okay, let's make that happen. I think okay. we'll have to. Okay. So I just want you to take this time to. Not only shout out your friends in our music community, but promote how freaking amazing that music community well, is right now and what we got happening. Such a good community. Like, first and foremost, with Saskatoon, because we're all about local, That's Black it. Cat, they have been the go to for just, they've been a good bridge for the young bands. Because basically, when we lost the Jazz Basement, you know, yeah. that was like our all ages venue that was like totally. a licensed all ages show. Uh, you could have shows there. So now there's no place for kids to play. And. Yeah. Go get your reps in. Yeah, ha- your reps. Yeah, Everybody having needs reps. a place like Black Hat's nice because they'll bring in younger bands and totally. you know give them a chance. And uh, again, I love Amigos and have played there and will play Absolutely. there many times. But sometimes it's harder for a younger band to get, get the in. you know the three four hundred. Are there any there. younger bands you want to show everyone? Because I have one that I just want to give all the love to. All right, man, Jason Oshik and Fake Paradise. If you haven't heard of Fake Paradise before, these dudes blew my mind. They were my first and only interview over at CFCR on the Buzz. And these dudes came in and they were like, man, I remember you from the radio. My mom used to drive around the city and I would listen to you and tell her how awesome you were. I was like, come on, man. No, you didn't. So uh, to those two men, Fake Paradise, check them out. They are insanely good. It's just two dudes, too. It's awesome. Oh, sweet. Yeah, well, I want to bring them in here sometime. That's why I'm bringing them up. So. Yeah, we just played a show with Untimely Demise and we were opening up for a band called Calevra. They're a nice, yes. uh, a good uh, Regina kind of, you know, just heavy metal band but there was a local band here that hopped on the bill called, and i love the name macro doser and now they they share our jam space so i, I think we'll throw a, a shout out they're just good guys and i like that kind of music so hey yeah, great I, name i say it all the time why micro dose when you can macro well, dose exa- or is it is macro more or less than micro it's, doesn't sound like it it is okay anyways <laughs> big paradise we love you guys you're amazing so we got all these boys sorry shout out yours again What's that? Macro dose. Macro. And what was the other one before? Well, uh, clever, I think Thank we're going to get. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So any shows coming up that we should do? Well, the big one is for us, May 11th. That's in Winnipeg. That's Manitoba oh, Metal Fest. So yes. three, three Inches of Blood, They're a seminal Canadian band. I they've they've been. Inches. You know what? You want to talk about putting in your reps? Um, my man, guy number one, Crazy Kyle from the original Con Gary's Super Awesome Podcast. <laughs> Uh, he was telling him and the fridge rack were telling us stories about how three inches of blood would show up at Amigos and they played a seven people and they'd sit there and drink with everyone after well, like the coolest dudes. Well, the first time we ever found out about three inches of blood, our buddy's like, yeah, I got three inches of blood tickets. Yeah. We go there and we saw the opening band because like the band, the three inches of blood banner was behind and we're like, oh yeah, they're pretty good. And we left because you know, Amigos, every show starts at 12. So yeah, like, it's it, hard. It man. was like one thirty already. We're like, that's gotta be it. And yeah. then we left before three inches of blood came on and no. yeah, we're like, ah oh, man. What is it? Deadly Sinner? Deadly uh, Sinner! Give me some uh, falsetto real quick. Get that Deadly Sinner. I got nothing. Oh, damn it! I was really hoping to put I, you I on the spot with one vocal. We know that. Oh, never mind. No, <laughs> that was the no-go. Uh, no, I, I, I can't. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, by the way, you want to shout out to your beautiful, lovely wife over there? Uh, uh, a shout out to Aaron. Uh, she's, Aaron, everyone. She's the one, yeah, she's the one that could do the, uh, the falsetto. Oh, yeah, I've heard her. I had the Raven yeah. Witch on yesterday. Did you notice? Woo! Did everyone see I that? I did, yeah. We've uh, been watching every, every oh, you program. Guys are so, sweet. Yeah. so we got some shows coming up. We got people maybe because you and I talked about this earlier about making this like a cool stop for bands that come through well, on tour. Absolutely, that's what I was thinking. And again, so how do we, we go gotta, about doing we, that? Well, we got to get Merb. I think Merb's needs the birthday to be, boy I definitely. He's birthday a networking Merbs machine. Needs to yep. be part of it, but yep. basically, when we've got a good band coming through that's playing a show, this is the perfect time to just bring them in here. We'll yeah. Do a little interview. Hang you know, the fridge is always full, but. Yeah, I like. Except for right now, because yeah. Ryan's been working too hard. Network, yeah. Ryan's been in the fridge. But <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I kind of lost my turn. Yeah, no, thought, basically, yeah, we're like just that. saying, like, anyone who's coming through, we want to make this a spot. So, say you're doing a show over at the Black Cat, 
at about four o'clock after you're done doing your tests and all that stuff and you're all set to go and you got that couple hours in between yeah. the kill well, come and, by and have that, a beer hang out we'll go on camera we'll talk about your thing. tour it's perfect because every touring band has yeah. nothing to do in these in between times and that's it's always the hurry about. up and wait so. so if you are thinking like us that might be a good idea hit us up with an email adam brookman my biggest uh, thing from yesterday was my sister saying that email. You couldn't see it. It was all blue and out of. That, uh, we made the same comment. Everyone We're like, did. Gonna have to change so that comment. First show was Gary touched the mics too much because he's trying not to cry. Second show was that that came up, but it was the wrong one. And third complaint, I don't think we're going to have too many today. We're doing pretty good. But, uh, what I really like, I love the idea of the you know uh, the uh, video game online thing. Because do you remember when we did, um, what was it, uh, 2012 for Systematic Eradication? Oh, we did yes. a fundraiser yeah. at Rock the Bottom or, or Fez or whatever. I remember that. But we had the Mario Kart, you know. Set uh, up. We had a Mario was, Kart tournament. So it, it kind of like we were trying to think like Wizard, you know, the movie Wizard, you know. that. Oh, kind of hold on a second. Like, no, you know, gimme, gimme, yeah. gimme. Jimmy Woods. It's one of my most quoted movies of all time. Like, so like Lucas loves the power glove. It's so oh. bad, right? Like, all Lucas know, is such a ding. All I know is the power glove. My buddy had it when I was younger, and when you gave the middle finger when you're playing skate or die, it did an ollie. So that's I, I knew how to do that. Ollie. But yeah, I love that's the amazing. idea of doing the video game. Yeah, so and like. That's right here. We have but, our yeah. stream channel coming in hot, man. But yeah, we, we're going to be on Twitch and we're going to be on Kick and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, for that fundraiser on Timely did, we also did the, sh the hockey shootout. Oh, so I remember but that. Like maybe we could get one of those table hockey shootouts here or something. You know, like we I'll tell you. And again, I, I've been told I should be giving a shout out to the, the big tooth there on 2nd Ave. See, uh, you know, he does oh. stuff. So uh, he has one of those tabletops. So we can just go take over his house and we can film in his basement. He'll Fantastic. allow it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's all good. So that's going to be really fun. <sighs> now, all of, geez, this is wild. So we still got, we got about, we got a little bit of time. Well, yeah, because basically, like when I'm uh, prepping for a show, I'm like, oh, just, just, I want to fly by the seat of my pants. I'm not going to go in with anything. Yeah. And then a, a song finishes and then all I've got is, thank you. <laughs> and then, and then like, okay. well, I got nothing else, but yeah. I can't say that for 30 minutes here. So I don't know. No, and, and my, my, my big thing with, as a, as tour manager, Gary, I've gone on some road trips. Like I've gone with 911 Turbo to Banff, stayed in the band house, got real weird with it, you know, doing all that stuff. And, and when you, that downtime in between sound check and actual time to go is, it can be so daunting if you don't have something planned for it. It oh. just sort of sits there yeah. and you're like, well, what do I do? Then you go back and you sit in your chair. It's like to have a place where you could go and just talk about music and talk about networking and sort of bringing everyone together. That's like gold oh. to me. I feel like we want to promote you and you want to be promoted. Yeah. This is where oh, we do I it. Well, because I've always said, I've always felt this about you, like when we would hang out every Friday and Saturday at your place and it was always such a mix of every type of people yeah. and you were the bridge between all of these people. Like, you know how like, Pennywise for punk, you know, like the jocks like yeah. it and the skaters. Like, you're like yeah. the Pennywise of like life. You can just bring everyone together, man. You're so kind. No, that's, see, that's again, I'm trying not to even touch it, but that was close to a tear. You almost yeah. got me a little bit. Well, that's, I'm basically, that's, that's my a good goal. Try. That's good. Let's that's just make each other cry. That's, that's good. Yeah, see, network, Ryan, you're such a douche. Yeah. It's like, yeah, cry. That gets views. Yeah. Get your subs. Guess what, dude? I've already said it before. We don't care about money, views, or subs. This is about us just being us. So, until we have to is what I've been told. And then it's like, well, by that time, hopefully all my friends are good. Then I don't have to worry about it. So that's where we're at. Blue Jays. Okay. I know. And we're not talking about the season because we've talked enough about this season. And I was also supposed to get to the arm stuff. Did you, did you see anything about the arm stuff yesterday and all the pitchers getting injured? Uh, I did, yeah. And yeah. I actually found that quite interesting. It's crazy. Because that is nuts to think yeah. about that, that we're, we're getting too good. It, literally, you're growing into that to be like, ugh. But, like, wh wh what did I, what have I done? Like, basically, everyone's saying, what have I done now? Yeah. But and I, it's, it's to me, and this is what's so good. Justin Verlander, great pitcher, uh, came out, and he basically said what uh, Coach Mazur was saying, in that it's just the way that you're raised now. You're throwing as hard as you can, like Max Velo, or Velo, yeah. Max Velo, like, s since you're six years old. And you're learning curveballs when you're seven, and you're just, you're, your body, no matter how good you have it you're all you're so used to that when you get up there that it's just good luck like everything's gonna it's just, yeah. everyone's a time bomb your elbow your ulnar your ucls all that stuff it's all a time bomb well, it's gonna I, go at some point i get every time i move my body in the day i'm like one step away yeah. from pulling something and i don't even do anything yeah. so. <laughs> so like what what the heck is the answer to that right i don't know like how do you I'm fix kinda that like, ah, it kind of did go a little bit too far i agree you can't have the you know the tall that's the world we live like, in now 
there's got to be a just, little give and take here. Just throw like, some, stick them in there yeah. and make them go three times through the rotation, like Fertlander said. <laughs> Somehow find a way to ad- ad- incentivize, incentivize? Yeah. to incentivize a pitcher to understand the value of going six, going seven, instead of just four and getting pulled after yeah. two times through. Like, it's just Jose Barrios last year in the playoffs. People are still very upset playoffs. about that. Shout out to everyone who booed yesterday when he got pulled early again. That was very <laughs> funny. Uh, so that was just something I want to touch on, but it leads into this. Uh, your favorite Blue Jays moments. Because every time you and I see each other, we always look back to the good old days. Yeah, well, it's obviously going to be a 92, 93, because uh, what I would do, uh, I was really into, I played uh, softball or whatever, at the time, but I would throw a tennis ball at my garage door in between nice. innings or whatever. Yes. And, you know, it was kind of like perforated. So sometimes it would like hit and, yeah. you know, and then Different I, would reactions. Able, yeah, I would be able to work on my re- yeah. reaction time. But yeah, I would always just go in and out and watch the games. Generally, I would watch when the Jays were, were batting, but I would, wouldn't watch when we're defending because I just, I'm the worst, like, you can't handle fan. stress, I can't, man. Yeah. I can't it's too, handle it. It's stressful, yeah. But yeah, I would say uh, any of the, the the home run, like the Joe Carter moment. Oh, so, you know, uh, the home all, run yeah. and when he, you know, was on first base yeah. and caught it and then he uh, starts jumping or whatever. Like, Do you remember where you were for those? Those are like I do. those real. I yeah. absolutely do. I was at the one, I was at my friend's place and he lived in those apartments. You know, it used to be, uh, what was it? Forestry Confectionery. Oh, yeah. But now it's, I don't know. Regal or something like that? Something something Regal Confectionery? Now, but yeah, they're those yeah. Little brown, like, yeah. apartment buildings. We were just at my buddy's Random place and I just, watching. yeah. See, I remember I was at my old buddy uh, Kevin Kruder's house, Seven McCaskill, I think. And for 92, I remember watching the basement. I'll never forget it because I was watching. And I'm like, Otis Nixon is up. That guy's really fast. Like, he's not going to yeah. bunt, is he? Like, are they going to try to bunt this? And then they say he's looking for the bunt. And then he shows bunt. And I'm like, holy cow, they're actually going to do this. This like I was laughing. I was like, it's over. And then to see, was it Solomon that threw it over? Or Tim Lynn? One of those two. Flips it over to Joe, and then he does that. He starts jumping, and they're going. So I remember Kevin Kruger's basement being like, why the hell did Otis Nixon bunt? That was so weird. And then 93, we were all watching at my, my house on uh, Dufferin Avenue, and we were out in the hot tub room, and they had all these windows in them. And when the Jays won, my brother's uh, buddies rioted, and one of them threw me through the window. <laughs> Shattered the window. So, like, my dad comes out. So, my dad, he had to go through a lot. My dad had to come walk into a situation where my head had gone through the, the drywall of the actual wall in the house because I was playing the flash with my brother. He would throw my head through the bar downstairs just to see all the glasses fall down because they had the overhanging glass. He threw me as hard as he could. And then uh, that one as well, I went to the window and I'm like, I'm so sorry, Dad. We just got a little too excited. So uh, I forget which year it was, but I, I got to say that the Ed Sprague home run oh, where he was put in, like yeah. pinch, like you got to love when someone comes in off the bench. See, Ed Sprague was 93, 94, because we had Mr. Mullet himself, Kelly Gruber, the That's year before. That's Kelly Gruber. Oh, man. I mean, the guy tried to dip, but no one can dip like Pat Borders. I'm sorry. That guy that single-handedly started a chewing addiction well, for I, everyone my age for our entire yeah. lives, watching Pat Borders call reels. a game like this. Like, yeah. But <clears throat> when we were playing, we had the full big league chew. like a Another full, great product yeah, to get people into product. chewing yeah, tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> big league chew. Oh, man, I love it. But it's, Ten it's, seconds it's, of just great flavor. Now, here's, here's, here's a really... <laughs> flavor country. We all, it's a big country, <laughs> trust me. So with that in mind, again, uh, shout out to Nickel Plumbing. My dad said he'd like to get a little bit more advertising on there. So Nickel Plumbing, they're a really good company. You'll love them. Nickel Plumbing, hit them up. Uh, 653-1899. Sub- oh, yeah, there's a subscribe button. If you look over on the subscribe button, wherever Smash it is. Smash that. Oh, that no, subscribe. We don't, oh, no. <laughs> we don't say that here, Matt. We never tell oh, anyone to do anything. Bad. This my is bad. something that we are very careful about. because so I it's always agreed. Say, I won't talk into the mic anymore. Nothing makes me more upset than uh, when I'm watching something on YouTube and someone tells me to do something. Hey, if it's what I'm doing, if it gets interrupted by an ad or something, that also upsets me very much. So we're trying to avoid all that as much as we can. I, I, I respect But I will that. say that... <laughs> It's, it's just very funny to me that we were even talking about this. They hit the subscription. That's the logo. Dad, that's your extra little bit of advertising. A little sprinkle. Aquaman as well. Shout out to Lloyd Minster Water. We still don't know what my brother-in-law does out there. Love him though. D-Rock's my man. A shout out to uh, the, the Nefs and nieces as well. Love you guys. So this is what I want to do to close this out. How are we doing for time there, LB? Oh, well, we're dead on. Ooh, okay. We're going to do this little one, and then we can start playing me out at about 54. How many players can we name, the three of us right here, from the 92 and 93 teams together? Because everyone gets them mixed up, so we're just going to put them both together. The back-to-back Blue Jays, how many do you think we can name? 
50. Whew, I like that. Network Ryan, what do you think? I'm with him, at least. That's almost two full rosters. That is two full rosters. Only 25 each, 26, man? I guess we'll leave two out. All right. If you're counting at home, we're going to go for this, and I know you'll be singing along with us. But I'm going to try to, what we'll do first is we'll go through batting orders. So I'm going to start with batting orders, and then if I miss anything, you hit me up, and then we'll flip to pitchers. Okay. So just follow my lead here. We're going to do this together. I know it sounds complicated, but it won't be. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so before there was Ricky Henderson, we had Devon White. Yep. So Devon White, Paul Molitor, Roberto Alomar, Joe Carter, uh, Manuel Lee, I believe, in 92 oh, was the shortstop nice. before Tony Fernandez came in. Uh, and then you got Kelly Gruber, Pat Borders, uh, Dave Winfield, Candy Maldonado. I believe that's most of 92. And then Ricky Henderson came in in 93. What about Joe Carter? Jolton Joe, he's hitting cleanup. Yeah, he was hitting cleanup there. Um, who else? So now all the texts are coming in. And you're missing these guys, these guys. So now pitchers. Go for pitchers because I just had a hot line on those guys right now for the hitting. Juan Guzman? Yep. Um, what do we got for our closer? The guy, Steve. Mm. Steve. Dave Steve was on the 92 team. But uh, I believe you're trying to remember Tom Hankey, the Terminator, oh, and the great Dwayne Ward, yes, who was the greatest setup man yes. of all time, who became a closer. That was awesome. Uh, Middlemen, Paul Quantrill. Who else? Mike Timlin, we talked about him. Mike Timlin, as well as Todd Sottlemyre, David Cohn, uh, Pat Hankin, Cy Young winner, Pat Hankin. Wow. Yeah. Who else do we got? Keep thinking about that bullpen. It. we got to be getting there. we got a couple minutes left to go, and I don't want to leave anyone off this list. Uh, well, we definitely know that... <laughs> I was going to say the managers, but it was just managers. Cito Gaston. Cito, yeah. Everyone knew Cito. So that was good. Who else? Who else was thrown out there? So we get one from the text. I'll go to the texter. Yeah. Here we go. Let me use the texter. Uh, Ken Daly? Ken Daly? Nope. Oh, sales guy Dave saying Dave Winfield. There's a good one. Yep. Adam the Postman. <laughs> they really like that didn't get enough love. I just can't remember who they were. Dave Stewart. Yes. Dave yes. freaking Stewart, bro. Iron Arm. Send him out there and watch him go. Margaret loves Dave Stewart. That's why she came back. Hey, quick hit in the Maggie cam before we call it. Proudly brought to you by our good friends over at Pet Planet on 8th Street, your pet's natural grocer. We have the oh, Maggie, Maggie cam. And I got my legs there. I see what's happening now. Maggie, you're on TV. Say hi. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That was close. That was good. Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> Network Ryan, you got to like that for promo cuts, eh? That's a good promo cut. You can mark that one. All right, do we got anyone else uh, with anything to say around here before we call it a day? No, just it's so good to see this coming into fruition. I'm so fruition. grateful to have you and in here. Yeah, and again, if you have awesome. a band out there and you want to do something cool, this is the stop for you when you come through, okay? Or a podcast, or a podcast. even better. Yeah. Again, the email's there. You can find all of our info here. Get a hold of us. It will be great. Uh, Adam, if we want to start running the outro, we can say our goodbyes here. What do you think? Shout out to Frankie's Fingers. Von Trask Grandpa played this at like 94 years old. Man, that's bad. Just sat down and played it. Of course he did. Like that whole thing. Shout out to the Trasks. You guys are amazing. So that's the show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. It means the world. Uh, shout out to Lil B, the greatest producer slash head engineer on the face of the earth. He loves when we compliment him. He does this all the time. <laughs> that's all I see is just like an eyeball that just rolls. Uh, to Network Ryan, I love you. Thank you for being the heart and soul of this operation and the only one that understands anything uh, as far as putting this out to you goes. Uh, you, my sweet, beautiful prince, I love you. Thank you for everything you do, for all the shows, for all the fun, all the bands, and for all the awesome that's, that's about to take place here. Thank you for everything that you're doing with this. Again, it's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. I love you. Thank you for coming by. And uh, we will be back tomorrow. We're looking. Get this. So on tomorrow's show, we may be doing a live in-house master's pool draft that you can be a part of. You could join us and be on that draft. And then the best part is, is if I win the draft, subscribers are winning money. So if I win, everyone wins. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get to that. And oh, so much more tomorrow. Until then, have the greatest, most incredible Tuesday night of your life. And do not forget, like we always say, karma is very, very real. Do good things so you can notice that good things start happening to you. This That's all is it takes. True. That's all it takes. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And now we talk like this.